Uh, good evening, everyone. Uh, I will talk about my work about long-term person re-identification using true vision, true motion from videos. Um, actually, for person re-identification, there's a lot of works re in recent years, and most of them they focus on short-term person re-identification. Short-term means that giving a surveillance camera. Uh, you have to find the same person on the different camera views. Most of the time, the there's no overlap between the cameras. Uh, for the challenges, it's, it's quite common, like the illumination changes, uh, cluster background, or the uh, viewpoint changes. And for the state of art method, uh, in terms of feature extraction, uh, there's kind of hard crafted features like uh, histogram or gradients, or even CM based learned features. There's quite a lot of applications for person re-ID, uh, such as a person retrieval or detection or uh, tracking. The limitations of our, uh, of our current work is that uh, they only deal with short term, means that uh, most of the time people will not change their clothes. So our work is about uh, how can we deal with when people change their clothes. For example, you come to the same uh, scene, maybe a week later or a month later, probably you will change your clothes. If you use the uh, you know the state of art method like appearance based feature, you probably will feel. Here is an example. Uh, in the first row, the uh, same person on the different clothes, uh, and uh, in the in the column, you can see that the, the two persons wear similar clothes. If you use some normal similarity method like maybe equality method or cosine, you will see that the inter the inter similarity. I mean different person. The similarity is really easy means that the common short-term method cannot work here. Uh, our motivation is that uh, we have to collect some kind of data in the same person on the different clothes, and uh, we have to investigate the motion-based feature rather than appearance. So we, we gain some knowledge from gait recognition and uh, action recognition area, means that we can generate video-based features. And we also consider about the human body parts, means that the importance of your uh, upper body and lower body are different. Uh, here is the proposed method, giving the uh, uh, videos to describe the person. We, we manually crop the bounding box of the person and divide the, the bounding box into several parts. And we, we uh, use optical flow to generate the dense trajectories and extract features on top of dense trajectories. Finally, we use uh, some uh, backward like models to describe the, the video. Uh, for the body action pyramids, normally we use the whole body and upper body, lower body, or even fine segmentation of the body parts. And uh, for the feature to, to describe the motion points, we use the dense trajectories, HOG, optical flow, or motion boundary histograms. Here is the uh, illustration of the person under the video surveillance camera. And you can see the move, moving points uh, denoted by the green lights uh, uh, just to describe the video. Uh, for the experiments, uh, as I mentioned, we have to get the data by ourselves. And the normal, uh, here we use the surveillance camera in our campus. Uh, we have camera one and two. And we ask the PhD students and master students to wear different clothes after a month or a week. Then we can get the data here. Uh, here is a snapshot of our video data set. Uh, for the each column, it belongs to the same person. Uh, actually, if uh, because we know the PhD students, but if you only watch one frame of the video, it's very hard for us to find the same, you know, the idea of the person. Uh, here is the result. Uh, because in the uh, public domain, there's no data set, uh, but there is only one video-based person reality data set. It's called, called PRID. Uh, the person's uh, person's appearance will not be changed. I mean, the clothes are still the same, but we manually select the, per the person with similar clothes. So we, we use our method. You can see that the, the blow, the bold one here, our method can outperform uh, the current of the best method. So uh, the, other, the other experiment is our own data set. Uh, we use the pure motion features here. Now we can also outperform the other method. Or right, the conclusion is that uh, when you when you try to find the same person, I mean between uh, uh, with different clothes, you have to use the motion features. So come to our poster to discuss with that.